So tell me, you wrote your recent letter, it was just before this right. deal or agreement or possible handshake, etc., was con exactly. concluded. Where does it leave us? What a great question. <laughs> if I knew that, I'd probably be a lot wealthier than I am. And my, <laughs> um, this trade disagreement, from, our, from my perspective, is really about intellectual property and tariffs are the vehicle that the President of the United States is using to put a little pressure on the PRC. Um, we have watched the attempts at solving this problem now for what, almost a year, and we get a little close and people get excited and then they back away from each other. Uh, ego seems to be the major driving force. Uh, I would say that the longer it goes, the more imperative it is that they both come to some agreement. Uh, Don, isn't it more about the optics here, actually getting together and forming some agreement of some form of the other, even though it doesn't address some of the fundamental Absolutely issues correct. like, you know, IP, Huawei for another one here, essentially the things which they're really, really fighting about, I suppose. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it's, it's grandstanding, it's theater at its best. Uh, I think that, that the, the U.S. election in November next year it starts to be an important factor. Uh, popularity for the president of China ha with the problems that we're seeing here in Hong Kong. Uh, all this is, is putting pressure on both sides to come to some kind of agreement. They'll, they'll run at it, they'll slide back. Uh, the, the middle group that is nego doing the, the hard work is having a hell of a time getting the people above them to say, okay, let's go with it. And I, th I think that's what the problem is. Don, it's Haslinda and KL. Welcome back to Asia. When you take a look at the equity Thank markets, you. is it fair to say that this is a market that wants to keep going up? Forget about fundamentals, forget about weakening PMIs, forget that China is slowing down. Whatever little bit of good news will drive the market higher. Is the market underpricing risk? Uh, probably not, in my perspective. I, I think the market is looking through this problem, seeing that there will be a resolution. The market doesn't know when, of course, but I think, at least from our perspective, our portfolios are not hugely overpriced. With very low interest rates, with negative interest rates in, mo in many parts of the world, uh, ec good quality equities are not that expensive. So there will be a pop when, this, when there is some kind of resolution, but it's, uh, uh, I, I would tell you, from our perspective, the market is not overvalued. So Don. what's a buy uh, right uh, now, Don? I can't hear you. Uh, Hesed is asking, what is a buy right now? Fund, <laughs> uh, well, our favorites, of course, and we're to, so we're talking our own book. Uh, our favorites would be environmental control, would be domestic orientated companies in both China and the United States so that the trade thing isn't as important to specifics, whether it's domestic transportation, whether it's pharmaceuticals, whether it's education. These are areas in both countries I think we could, we could continue to invest. So you, you are a long-term investor. We are a very long-term investor. You know, I made my first trip here in 1976, and I've been coming regularly, as you know, ever since then. And I see, I've seen the growth, and I see the potential for, for the Asian area with, with China being the center point of that. Over the next 20 years, it's going to be a terrific place to invest. So 